Hey everyone, I'm Danny and welcome to Wizardry Workshop. Today's video is another collaboration with Chantel from Darkest Raven Designs, so check her out. Her YouTube channel is Darkest Raven Minis. I'm going to link that in the description box. And I'm also going to link her video that's the collab with this one. So the idea this time was we came up with a couple of different wintry holiday themed potions. When we do potion collabs, I in the past, I have designed the labels and um, we both used them. But this time, um, we just did our own thing and it's going to be a complete surprise what each other's stuff looks like because that seems to be the more fun way to do it. So there are two potions. We're doing um, the Yule Goat, which is kind of like summoning the Yule Goat as a potion. And then we're also doing uh, Weasley's Winter in a Bottle. I'm going to link Chantel's version of this video in the description box. Go ahead and head over there and check that out when this video is over. That's exactly what I'm going to do once these videos post. Check out the description box below for a list of all the supplies you're going to need, as well as the free downloadable templates. And let's get started. All right, so first we're going to do the Yule Goat potion. Here is the label I designed. I called it the Yule Goat Conjuring Concoction. So this is printed on letter-sized sticker paper. I am going to cut mine out using my Cricut, and this is not a Cricut tutorial, so I'm not going to like go into great detail on how I do this. But sometimes the print then cut just doesn't cut it. Sometimes you need that extra space around the paper where it would normally like uh, print that square. So sometimes it just doesn't work. So what I like to do is cut just a regular piece of paper with my template that I created. And then I take that paper as a uh, as like kind of like a stencil and I line it up with my print. And then I can see exactly where the print needs to be placed in order to cut it out properly. So now I can put this on my Cricut uh, sticky mat. Just line up that top stencil that we did and make sure that the bottom print is lined up where it should be. Take the stencil away. And now this should be properly lined up in order to like cut properly on the Cricut. Now with those cut out, we can continue on with the bottle. So here's the bottle I picked. It's a flat kind of circular bottle. You want like a three inch by three inch label to be able to fit on the front of the bottle. But I really do suggest like a flat circular one. If you get a curved one, this isn't going to look as good. Now, the next thing that I have here, this is kind of like string lights that I put inside of this bottle. So if I turn it on, you can see and there's a little power switch back there and it lights up the inside of the bottle. But I didn't like the way this fake cork looked. So we are going to fix that using this cork roll and it is an ad adhesive backing cork roll. It's basically cork textured paper, but it's not paper. It's actual cork, but it's sticky on one side and it's very thin. So we're going to be able to use it to cover this. If you'd like to know the exact like dimensions and like thickness of this, here you go. I got this at a local craft shop and I'm sure that um, whatever craft shop you have nearby probably has something similar. But I'm also going to see if I can link it in the description box on Amazon. So if you can't find any, you can probably order it. And the idea is to cover this cork with it, but I want to keep the back accessible so I can change the batteries and so I can turn it on and off. So we're just going to kind of like roll this around on top of this and figure out the best size to cut this down to. I'm actually going to take a bit of this cork and expose some of the adhesive and then I'm going to start right where I need it to start so that I can still access the on off switch and the battery pack. So now that that's on there, I can kind of like mark where it needs to be cut. And of course we need to cut it before it reaches the end here. So now we have like kind of a, a good shape to cut out. I'll go ahead and just use my scissors to cut that. As long as it wraps around properly, which it looks like it does. 
just like this. So I'll go ahead and take that backing off and wrap it around my fake cork. And of course the top we need to um, do like a cork circle on top of that as well. This one's gonna be a little easier. I'm just gonna trace it and then I'll cut it out. And with that circle cut off, we can peel off the backing and the top of our fake cork, we can go ahead and cap off with that circle of cork. And so now this cork actually looks like a real cork, but we can still get to the battery and we can turn the lights on and off in the back. We'll go ahead and feed the lights into the bottle. So when we do this, you kind of don't, don't want to just go like straight in co continuously. Every once in a while, instead of like continuously going in, I'm going to take a piece and wrap it up like this and push that into the bottle as well. That way it's not all just kind of like at the bottom of the bottle. Here we are. And if I turn it on, the lights are kind of everywhere instead of just like right at the bottom or halfway up it's kind of like spread out. So that's kind of, that's what we're going for. We'll go ahead and put the label on now. So go ahead and get your sticker paper, grab a label that's easy to get to. If you don't have sticker paper, you can do this on regular paper and then just use a glue stick or something to glue it on. If you don't have a cutting machine like this, I do have a version that doesn't have the extra like artwork on the outside. So you can just cut it out with scissors. So far we're here, so we've got our label on there, we've got the cork in the top, and it can turn on and glow. We'll take the cork out, but keep the lights inside. I'm going to fill this bottle up with water, because these lights are um, waterproof. All right, so now we are here with water in the bottle, and our lights can turn on with the water in there. The next thing we need is some paint that has uh, glitter in it. So what I, or metallic paint is kind of what we're going for. I'm using this color shift paint, which is really cool. I already had this around. It's, it's super cool. So it uh, kind of shifts colors de depending on what light is hitting it, which is really neat. So I'm gonna use this inside the water and that's going to give it this magical swirly type look uh, what you would see in the wizarding trunk potions i am just going to use the end of a paintbrush to sort of get some of this into the bottle without making a big mess and wipe that paintbrush off as quick, quick as you can so it doesn't dry onto the handle I will admit this is a bit more purple than i was expecting but now we have this potion and if i turn the lights on inside it glows and <laughs> if we shake it up you can see those magical swirls inside that glowing liquid which is really cool i am going to put a little wax seal on top of this i'm using some red wax i have the hogwarts wax seal but it doesn't really make sense with this potion, I don't think. So I'm going to be using this kind of pentagram, pentacle, magical symbol wax seal. So we'll just light it, let it drip on top until we have a, a good little dollop of wax on top of there. Press the stamp on top, wait a minute or so for it to dry, and then carefully remove it. I got uh, some fake plant viney stuff from uh, Goodwill. I'm just going to use some needle nose pliers, cut off a big chunk of this vine right here, and the rest can be saved for something else. I really only need a little bit of this, so here's uh, one little piece of vines. And I'm also going to use some jute cord or twine. So the way I wrap this around is I make a little kind of like U-shape or loop at one end. I put that at the back of the neck of the bottle and then I take the other, the long uh, end of the cord and start wrapping it around while holding that in place until I don't have to anymore. So now I have a short piece of cord here 
and then I also have that loop at the top. But I also want to incorporate this into it as well. I'm just gonna take these smaller pieces with the leaves on them, actually. So I've got one layer of that cord on there, kind of like just a loose layer. I'm gonna take one of these vines, wrap it around. I kind of want the leaves to be sort of off to the side. I'm gonna start by positioning the leaves where I would like them to go. So I'm gonna have this one kind of like up in the back and then I'll wrap the rest of that vine around and then I'll go around maybe once with my jute cord to get that to stay in place. I'm gonna tuck some of the vines behind the jute cord that I've already done so that it looks a little more natural. And now when you're happy with the amount of cord that you've wrapped, you can trim it down and we will uh, do the final tightening by taking the end that you just cut, putting it through the loop at the top like this, and then we're going to pull the bottom down. As you can see, it's tightening that loop around and you can pull both both ends a little bit like this. You could just cut these off, which is what I'm gonna do. Um, you could also tie like a, a bow or something on it, but it's in the back. I did that purposefully because I do just kind of want to trim mine down and uh, hide them in there. I also just want a couple of these little red berries because they look festive and I'm gonna tuck them in where I can. There, so now it's, it's almost like a, a Christmassy winter plant right there with the red berries, the green leaves. And there is my Yule Goat Conjuring Concoction Potion. Um, you can see the cool swirlies in there. And if we turn the lights on, you can see the swirls around the lights. It's really cool to see them glowing inside the bottle with those magical swirls. And now for one, the one that I really wanted to do the most is the Weasley's Winter in a Bottle. I know this looks like a really big light bulb, but it's actually a bottle that I got from a craft shop. Um, I got it from Hobby Lobby. I don't like shopping there, but it was my last resort. Um, but anyways, this is actually the lid, and we don't need that part. We're just going to use this bottle. I needed one this pretty much exact shape. The next thing we're going to need is a fake little Christmas tree. I got this at the dollar store and it's it's kind of matted and crunched at the bottom, but it doesn't matter because we only need the top part. I couldn't find one smaller than this, but I just need a small part that's going to fit inside this bottle. So we'll just get in there and cut this one in half. And we, we end up with sort of this little snowy pine tree. I also have some more cork but it's actually a bit thicker so not too much thicker it's a little bit thicker and it doesn't have an adhesive side we actually need some circles of this cork board or roll of cork that will fit into the top of this bottle here you don't really want it to be touching the rim at all it needs to be able to like if you let go of it it would just fall in so this is about about the right size. Um, for my bottle, that's almost an inch, not quite an inch. So I'll just cut out maybe two of those, roughly the same size. I'm gonna use hot glue to stick these together and then I can stack them up. And now it's basically a thicker piece of cork board. I'm even going to color mine white. For this, I'm just gonna do it the easy way with a white paint marker. This is an oil-based paint marker. Um, I don't know if that really matters. I think it does. This will get wet, and I'm pretty sure water-based paint um, wouldn't do well. Um, we're gonna have to let that dry, but this is gonna be a base to our tree. So we do need a hole in the middle of this, I'm just using an awl. These are typically used for book binding, but they have many, many uses. So, and as long as that middle wire part to the tree can fit in there, it can. I'm gonna put a little glob of hot glue on top of that hole. And then I'm going to put the tree through that hole, the bottom of the tree through the hole. On a level surface, I'm gonna make sure it's standing up pretty straight. And once it's looking good, 
we'll just let all that dry. I guess I didn't have to paint that cork. You can't even barely see it under the tree. <laughs> Now that we've finished our little mini tree with the little cork uh, base, I guess, we are going to put it inside this bottle. And no, it's not just gonna be floating around. We're actually going to attach it inside the bottle to the middle part, straight through here. Now, I could do this with hot glue, although I feel like that would be really messy and difficult to do. So I have a different plan. We're gonna be using Bondic. I've used this in the past and it's wonderful. Um, it fixes basically anything. It's pretty much um, resin, liquid resin in here. And then uh, this is a UV light. So the, the resin doesn't cure, meaning it won't harden until you hit it with the UV light. So I think if I put some, some resin, I just drip some in here down to the middle and then I take this tree and I put it in there and then I situate it as best as I can, and then I hit it with the UV light through the bottom of the glass, I think it's going to stay. And it's definitely going to be waterproof because we also are going to be putting water in this. So let's see if my plan works. There we go. I'm also going to put some right around the rim of this. Now, as I said, that is going to stay um, in its kind of liquidy, honey-like form until I hit it with the UV light. So let's get the tree through the bottle without destroying it. Please. Oh, good. Great. So I've got the tree kind of in the middle there. I'm just using my screwdriver to situate it properly. And then I'm going to hit it with the UV light now. So here it goes. I'm hitting it with the UV light. I know I didn't get the best angle, but I'm going to show you a good angle <laughs> once it's actually done. Once, once this has uh, cured. Okay, it's curing. It's definitely curing because I can turn this on its side now. And as you can see, we have a little Christmas tree inside of our bottle. It's only supposed to take four seconds to cure, but I, I'm being very, very generous with this because I do not want this thing to come off. I don't want it. I want it to be 100% cured. There we go. Oh man, that worked exactly as I planned. I was so worried about that part. Thank you, Bondic. Okay, so we got the tree in there. The next step is going to be fitting the cork. I have this I, I bought. It's just a pack of cheap Christmas ornaments, but I thought this top part was really cool, and I thought it would be really neat to use that as the bottle stopper, but it's way too small, which is where the roll of cork comes in. I am going to make this basically a, a cork. So I will cut a piece off larger than I actually need. And then I'm going to uh, sort of roll it on just to see how much I might need. And now I can trim it so it's straight across the top. And then I also need to trim the bottom part off. So that is just the right size. Now I'm going to add hot glue all along the inside of this. And then I'm going to roll this on to the ornament. And now with a little bit of trimming and adjusting, I end with this. Obviously the seam will go in the back so we don't see that. But yeah, I mean, it does look like a bottle stopper and it will fit into the bottle. It is going to be basically like a snow globe potion. So I've got this uh, diamond, fine diamond holographic glitter. So we're just gonna pour some in. This is actually a good time to use this top because we're gonna fill this with water and shake it up and make sure it looks how we want it to look. I'm probably gonna fill it up right to about a little more than halfway up this little neck part right there. The glitter usually sinks. I, I did a test and it, and it sank, but this time it's floating at the top, so we're just gonna go with it. We can take this lid off now, we don't need it. What we do need is the stopper we made, and you know, just try and find a spot where the tree looks the best, and then put the stopper in with the seam to the back. But we're gonna make this a little bit more permanent because uh, we don't want it to come out. And I'm gonna use some hot glue, kind of around the bottom, middle, middle area probably. And then that should 
go right in to the bottle and the glue is going to hold the stopper in place so that it's not going to come out and we just wait for that to dry. Well, while that's drying, we can talk about the label for this one. I went for more of a tag and obviously this has already gone through my Cricut machine. I printed it on this holographic type paper that I thought was really cool. It's like a cardstock, but you could do like a, a silver paper. You could even just do white if you don't have anything fancy. So I'm just kind of like popping out all the little pieces after the Cricut cut this out, you know, and I do have a uh, cut guide you can load into Cricut and I have my settings in a text file there that you can uh, kind of mimic to get this to cut out properly. And if you don't have a Cricut, I don't know, you might have to cut it out by hand. I don't think that's gonna work very well. I think you really do need a Cricut for this one. But hey, if you do get it cut out without a Cricut, I'd love to see uh, what it looks like. I, I'm not even gonna attempt it, I don't have the patience. And when it's all cut out, it looks like this. It says Weasley's Winter in a Bottle. Our goal is to hang this on the kind of side right here. For this, instead of using the uh, regular jute cord, I decided to go with some blue yarn. Wrap that blue yarn around here the same way we did for the other potion with the twine. But as you go, make sure about halfway through, you add a little white ribbon underneath and just keep wrapping around so that you have this white ribbon kind of off to the side. At this point, we're going to put the tag on it. And if you haven't guessed it, that is what the ribbon is for. We're gonna use that to add this tag to it. I was gonna use my hole punch to put a little hole right at this top part, but it appears to be hiding from me at the moment. So I'm going to, or maybe the borrowers are borrowing it, but I'm going to uh, use my awl to very carefully put a hole right there. Yeah, now that I'm looking at it, <laughs> the hole punch might have been too, a little too big for that anyways, so this works out. Just take uh, one end of the ribbon and uh, get it through that hole we made, and then we're going to tie off that ribbon on the side and trim off the extra bits of ribbon. So you should just have like a little loop with the tag on it. So now we have the tag right here at the side of the, of the bottle. And there is one last touch I decided to do last minute because I found these at the craft shop. These are little uh, sh uh, silver glittery snowflakes. I'm gonna take one of them and put it at the very front of the bottle. So wherever you want the front of the bottle to be, that's where we're going to stick this one shiny little snowflake right there. I personally wouldn't do more than just one. I think the simplicity works really well. Now if we take a closer look, you can see the hot glue that was around the rim there. And to hide that, I have some silver sealing wax. We'll just get it started. Once you have a nice drip going on, tilt the bottle a little bit and start dripping that. You don't want it to be on fire though. So I'm just gonna drip it around anywhere that I see the glue. Oh man, you really have to have a steady hand for this. And that does look a lot better, a lot more potion-like than the, I did get a little burn on there. But yeah, it does look a little more potion-like than hot glue being visible there. So <laughs> definitely suggest hiding that with some wax. This is hard to get in one frame because it's so tall, but uh, I hope this is focusing properly. I'm really happy with the tree inside. I think that turned out really cool. Um, at first I was pretty upset that the glitter is floating at the top, but now it kind of looks like clouds. And when you kind of shake it a little bit, it just goes wild with a snowstorm in there. I'm really happy with this one. This is probably my favorite out of the two. And that's it guys. Let me know what you think of these potions. I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. I can't wait to see what uh, Chantel comes up with. So join me over there and check her video out too. And if you made it all the way to the end of this video with me, you're a wizard, Harry. Give it a thumbs up down below if you did like the video. Subscribe if you're not subscribed for more Harry Potter DIYs and unboxings and other fandoms that I like. Happy holidays. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.